Hello and welcome to Auto Shenanigans. How the devil are you? Have you had a good week? My name is John. Thank you very much for joining me for another exciting Great British Road Journey. This week I'm still in East Sussex. It's still a county and I'm still to find out what exactly this county contributes to society. A nice place to retire maybe, but that's about it. This week we are of course off on a journey to explore more of East Sussex and today we'll be travelling from Crowborough through Uckfield and down to Hailsham. Don't worry, I've never heard of these places either. As always, to help navigate our way around, we'll be using a copy of my 1923 Michelin guidebook, period correct maps and insert joke here. We start then in the town of Crowborough. Notable residents include A-list celebrities such as Ross Kemp and Kerry Katona, but in the days of my 1920s guidebook, some Z-lister known as Arthur Conan Doyle would move to the town to live out the final years of his life. If you're not familiar with Arthur Conan Doyle, he's the author who wrote the Sherlock Holmes stories. As for the town, back then it was far smaller than it is now, with only around 5,000 residents, making it a nice place to retire, no doubt. My guidebook doesn't seem to think there's an awful lot to do in Crowborough, but one of the things it suggests we visit is Crowborough Beacon, where we should find a nice view. And we do. The only problem is that it's been spoiled a little bit by a golf course. However, interestingly, the golf course has been here since 1895, so even in the days of my guidebook, your countryside walk would have been ruined. Let's jump in the car and head off to our next destination. Initially, we'll be using the A26, and I can only assume that they've not got around to upgrading this part of the country because the A26 is exactly the same as it was 100 years ago, although not that it matters all that much because after mere minutes, we're turning off the route to make a quick detour. Indeed, because a short distance from the A26 is Nutley Windmill. It's the only working open trestle post mill in the country and it's believed to be around 300 years old. Hold it, hold it, what the hell is... An open trestle post mill. Yeah, good looking question. A post mill is a windmill built around a central post allowing for the structure to be rotated and face the wind. An open trestle post mill is the same thing, but its base is an open trestle. These were used on windmills that were used to pump water, the theory being that the base could be submerged and the windmill still operate. It was transported to the site here at Nutley in 1835 and it's been here ever since. And if we take a look at some older maps from the mid 1800s, we can see that the windmill is marked out as a corn mill. As is often the case with such structures, in later years it was abandoned, but then in the 1960s it was saved and fully restored and brought back into fully working order. It's still working today and if you want to take a visit and have a look around, you can. This is the 100 Acre Wood, and a short distance from here is the farm where Christopher Robin did indeed spend his childhood days. Author A. A. Milne would come up with the popular children's books following the adventures of Winnie the Pooh in the 1920s when he lived on Cotchford Farm, a short distance from here in the village of Hartfield. What you may not realise is that a lot of the characters and places in the books were based on things from real life. The 100 Acre Wood is in fact the 500 Acre Wood and it's part of Ashdown Forest in East Sussex. Whilst they are dining out on the tourism side of things slightly, this area is definitely the source of inspiration for Milne, as confirmed by Christopher Robin Milne, his son, and the kid in the book. Yeah, fair enough, that was two detours, but I've got to pad out the video somehow. Getting back on track, and we'll pick up the A26, which, as before, is the same as it was 100 years ago, until, that is, we get to Cooper's Green, just before Uckfield. To stay on the original route, we'll need to turn left onto London Road, which will take us right into the centre of Uckfield, which sounds ucky. Today, Uckfield is home to over 14,000 residents. In the days of my guidebook, not so many at little over 3,000. It seems like back in the day, hardly anyone lived in East Sussex. Whilst my guidebook does mention Uckfield, it doesn't give us any suggestions on things to see or do, so I guess we're on our own. An interesting structure can be found on the High Street and it's known as the Picture House. It was built in 1916 as a theatre for local military personnel, but not long after, in 1920, converted into a single screen cinema. This was later divided into two screens and then divided again in the year 2000 to offer three screens. It's certainly one of the older operating cinemas in the country, but it perhaps has lost some of that 1920s character following modernisation. It still remains open today, not only as a cinema, but a restaurant where a burger costs only £15. Perfect timing. At the other end of the high street, we find a bridge that carries the road over the River Uck. 
It's a horrible name. Next to the bridge and river is Bridge Cottage, a building that stands out a bit when compared to the more modern structures alongside it. It's a medieval house built in 1436 that had £1 million of lottery funding in 2014 for a complete restoration. It's run by the Uckfield and District Preservation Society, which are the same group of people that look after Nutley Windmill that we saw earlier. Today, Bridge Cottage hosts local history and community events and is available for private hire if you need to hire a medieval house. As we head out of Uckfield, the plan is to join the A22 via Eastbourne Road, but before we crack on, I wanted to make a quick stop and look at another house, although this one is probably more palace-like. It's known as Hamilton Palace, and it's apparently larger than Buckingham Palace found in that there London. At the time of its construction, it was said to be the most expensive private house built in the last 100 years. Construction started in 1985, and I don't know if you've noticed, but it looks like they never finished it. Details on this place are few and far between, most likely because its owner is dodgy as f***. By age 22, Nicholas van Hoogstraten owned 350 properties across Sussex, making him a millionaire, and he spent £40 million of his fortune on building his own palace. Although not before being convicted of several crimes, including bribery, the handling of stolen goods, manslaughter, oh, and did I mention he's a self-proclaimed Nazi fascist? Anyway, the palace is his. He owns it outright, as well as the land that it sits on, and it's believed to now be under the control of his children, and that's all there is to it. In more recent times, it's been reported that the owners are working on completing the structure, but come on, this is some sort of front for a dodgy operation or some money laundering, something like that. It's been under construction for nearly 40 years. Heading away from Escobar, Montana, Craig Capone Towers, we'll be heading down the A22, which, like the A26, follows the route of the old road nicely. Until that is, we get to a place called East Hoathly, where we find a more modern roundabout and bypass, but is it worth making a stop in East Hoathly? Nah, mate, I'd keep going. All right then, keep going, we will, and as we continue along the A22, we end up in a place with a bit of an unfortunate name. <laughs> Not only is there a lower dicker, there's an upper dicker as well, but my favourite is the dicker, for which sadly I couldn't find any road signs. And of course, in lower dicker, you'll find the Swallow Business Park. There's not a lot going on in Lower Dicker. I guess all of the fun and excitement is to be had in the Upper Dicker area. But interestingly, where today we find a furniture shop, we'd have perhaps once stopped in for an Olympic breakfast because this used to be a Little Chef restaurant. This branch opened in 1974 and would then close in 1990 following the opening of a new services a short distance away at the Bowship Roundabout. The new services initially featured a Happy Eater restaurant before being converted into a Little Chef in the mid-1990s. Of course, most of us know how it worked out for Little Chef, badly, and this branch closed in 2012 to be converted into a Starbucks in 2013. Anyway, that's enough dicking around, because <laughs> the village we were in was Lower Dicker. Never mind. We arrived shortly after in Hailsham, the final destination on our journey, and much like the other towns that we've looked at today, in the days of my guidebook, hardly anyone lived here. There's a church, and that's about it. So instead, we'll take a walk along the Cuckoo Trail. Today it's a path and cycleway, but it was once a railway that opened in 1880, running between Polgate and Eridge before seeing closure in 1968. Along the way, there are several reminders of what used to be here, but in particular, I wanted to come and take a look at the Eastwell Place footbridge that was built in 1913. What was previously an old railway bridge covered in paint is now an old railway bridge covered in nicer paint, thanks to a community-led project and about 10 grand from the local council. Local artists were asked to submit their paintings for consideration to be put on what's now called the Artist Bridge. It features 77 paintings and I suppose it's a bit like a free art gallery that's open all year round. Oh my god, it's Long Man. Do you remember this from last week? And there we are then guys, that's all we've got time for this week. Thanks very much for watching, I hope you liked the video. If you did, there is of course a button specifically for that, and if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. That'll be wicked sweet awesome. Enjoy the rest of your week, whatever it is you get up to. My name's John, you've been watching Auto Shenanigans, and I'll see you guys next time for another exciting Great British Road Journey. Until then, take care, bye-bye. <laughs>